And what I want to do is look at hard clipping specifically and case study and walk through use cases for it or a use case for it. Now, this is a contrived example because this case study calls for hard clipping as the most transparent solution. But in part of that, what I want to do is present this case study alongside utilizing soft clippings as a soft clipping as an alternative, compression as an alternative, limiters as an alternative. And the reason why I want to do that is because I think something I've been, I think has been not dangerous, but silly of me, or maybe not silly, maybe just I've been had my blinders on to is the fact that when I present information, I'm really excited about it and I showcase my sessions because I love showing real sessions from projects and whatnot and how they're carried along. But also people can interpret that as commonplace for a process they can replicate across every single session they do themselves. So what I'm going to be doing here is in this case study, present to you very specific details and understanding about exactly why a certain processor is being used and how. Okay, and that is to do with hard clipping. So I have this mix here, okay? This mix here is really beautiful song, Break a Good Man's Heart. And the true peak level is negative two. It has very sharp offshoot peaks, okay? So that's a very specific thing. Very sharp transient offshoot peaks. The loudest peak is negative two decibels, okay? And that peak lasts a total of four samples. Okay, four samples, 48,000 samples a second. It's one twelve thousandth of a second. If you go into auditory filters in terms of um, with psychoacoustics and temporal masking, any sort of artifact in that short of a period of time is almost indistinguishable and not noticeable. But the case study here is I want to bring that down to negative five. Okay, I want to bring that peak and buy myself three decibels of headroom as transparently as possible. So what I've got set up here is a hard clipper, okay? Then I've got a soft clipper set up in the same fashion. I've got a null test here so we can hear the effect of both of them. I've got a compressor, okay, with a two to one ratio, negative nine decibels threshold and a peak detection circuit that produces the same peak value, so negative five decibel peak value out and maintains the same amount of loudness as both the soft clipping and hard clipping. They both produce negative 17 luffs on the output and negative five decibels peak value. And then a limiter as well, plus five, negative five. And we can monitor the delta of the limiter. We can monitor the delta of the compressor and by safe soloing the clipping delta signal, that's phase inverted, we can actually listen to the effect of the hard and the soft clipper. So I'm going to play these back and then we'll go into each one and a bit about what it is actually doing to the signal. So the first one is the hard clipper. So let's play the hard clipper quickly. We'll open that up. Yeah, you finally did me a favor and you walked right out there. So you can see all those little red peaks, just getting those little bits shaved off. Now we'll look at the soft clipper. Yeah, you finally did me a favor, and you walked right out that door. And I haven't looked back in the scene she left, and oh boy, it feels so good. Now you notice with the soft clipper, not only are the peaks red, but some of the body also gets shaded in red because the transfer function, uh, it's a ten tangential curve or whatever it is, um, transfer function is changing the values of everything below that peak as well in order to match up with that transfer curve. So not only is it affecting the peak, it is affecting samples below the peak. We'll listen to the compressor. And then again, we're going to get into more detail as we get deeper into this video. Okay, beautiful. And now we can look at the limiter. Yeah, you finally did me a favor, and you walked right out that door. And I haven't looked back in the scene she left, and oh boy, it feels so good. 
Now let's listen to the delta. And after we hit listen to the deltas, we're going to look at the waveform data in Isotope RX to actually see exactly what's happening to those sample points. So let's listen to the delta of the hard clipper. Okay, that's just the little peaks. Now the soft clipper. Okay, now let's listen to the delta of the compressor. And now the delta of the limiter. So what we just heard there is the difference signal. So everything that particular processor is changing about that signal path. So if you notice with the hard clipper, it's not changing all that much. It's just those little small peaks that it's changing. And what does that mean with the audio? So let's actually look at Isotope RX editor. Here's the original signal. There's the peak. Now let's look at the hard clipper. That peak, those one, two, three, four samples, completely gone. Every other single sample point, okay, every other single sample point goes untouched. Now, let's look at the soft clipper. Ooh, wait a second, a little bit more change there. What was that? Okay, so you've got this peak here. Okay, if I'll just get a little square like that. You've got this peak here that gets changed, and these ones down here, which aren't above the ceiling, but they change. Okay, so that's the original one. That's the new one. Okay, we'll have that highlighted there. Original, new. Okay, so what it's actually doing, that transfer function isn't just changing samples above that ceiling, which, which I want to achieve. It's affecting all the samples leading in to that value as well. And that's why when we did the null test, we were hearing more than just those little peaks over negative five decibels. We were hearing everything subtly beneath it also getting changed and shaped and affected. And that introduces harmonics to other parts of the signal and colors the tone of it. Now let's look at the limiter. Okay, so this is the original and the limiter. So I think the limiters function might have a bit of a look ahead because you can see that peak before the big one is getting equally reduced in volume. So that might just be that particular mode, that modern uh, balance mode, sorry, of limiting that has a bit of look ahead that's compensating ahead, okay? And that's helping to smooth out that top to prevent distortions or as much distortion or minimize those distortions. And finally, we have the compression here. And that affects a lot. And you can see everything that happens in the release. So you've got the attack portion here and then the attack portion here and then the release portion of the compressor around here. And you can see that change because the game reduction's holding down for 80 milliseconds until it releases. So you got that there, and then the release there. That there, and then the release there. Okay? So the compressor's actually controlling a lot more. That's probably doing, that's probably the least transparent. It doesn't mean it's not a good tool. It doesn't mean any of these are bad tools, but I'm just making a point for the case study of controlling those peaks in the most transparent way. I want to affect as little of all the signal in here, I want to affect as little as possible. And if it means sacrificing four sample peaks for the sake of keeping the rest of the signal completely one-to-one -one neutral, it means I can buy a lot of headroom and have a very clean, transparent loudmaster in this circumstance where this case study, where this particular track allows me the flexibility to use a hard clipper in this fashion. So let's just have another listen back. And we're going to go over that very loud peak. Everything is level matched as well. Remember that. And the peak values are all negative five. If not, some of them are negative 4.7, some are negative 5.1, but they're all within that ballpark at trying to achieve the same purpose. So let's just loop these three seconds where that peak is and go through each one, one by one. Walk, it did me a favor, and you walk, it did me a favor.
So again, remember, this is a contrived example. I've got a particular goal. Manage the short peaks, those short little bursts above in order to buy myself headroom. And I wanted to present this in an open-minded way to the community because I don't think any single, single processor should be labeled as a scam or as something that is bad and dangerous and the devil. No, everything has a use case. And maybe you might find videos of me doing that. And if I have ever you know, spoken out of line or you see me speak out of line, call me out on it. Okay, call me out on it because I want to learn. And this is just me presenting to you, the community, my use case, the things I'm doing in my studio so we can all learn together in a positive and encouraging way. Anyway, with that, I'm going to get back to my day. I've got one more session to get off then I get to go home. So until next time, take care.